The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the day like we usually do, looking at the German DAX. As you can see, it's held up relatively well. We're still above the highs of yesterday, which is a pretty good thing, given the fact that most other things are breaking down quite a bit. If you'll take a quick look here uh, at the FTSE, You'll be able to see here that's a big, you know, it's a different story. We're almost ready to take out the June lows. We had this big gap down. So whether that means much or not, I'm not sure. The currencies are actually holding up relatively well, uh, given the fact that the uh, so, much, so much of these markets are moving around. And, of course, it's all related, uh, evidently, to the negative interest rates as our Treasury bond market now looks like uh, the dot-com bubble from uh, – 2000 but that's neither here nor there i finally understand the uh, the uh the negative interest rate scenario folks and the answer to that is i'm just not smart enough to understand it so that's the answer so we'll see what happens anyway we're having some really big swing in these bonds last night and one and two and three points but there is one thing that happened it probably doesn't mean anything at all but i'm going to bring it to your attention yesterday there was a big drop in the open interest in the spot treasury notes for 10 year the two year and the five year had had slight increases i mean talking with a 3.9 million they had increases of just a few thousand but there was a as many thousand, I think 20,000 drop in open interest in the September Treasury note. Now, usually that's as a sign that the market is weakening. Even though it's going up, that means there's short covering. But, you know, we live in interesting times. I'm just going to bring it to your attention. That's all I'm going to do. Um, the big news, of course, uh, from my perspective, is what's happening in Hong Kong. Uh, boy, I just was shocked today to see what they were doing. It was really uh, just really uh, very, very sad to see what's going on over there, that lovely country. And I think that the Chinese government has just about had enough. I don't know how much more they're going to take, but when they're throwing rocks and eggs at the building and stuff and putting graffiti there, and uh, these are these are all – um, young people, folks. This is not the the people in Hong Kong. <laughs> the old people, that, like my myself and my friends. Uh, but I, you know, it's just really sad to, to see that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, we want to uh, talk a little bit about the gold market too. The gold market blasted up right after the close yesterday. We got up into that 1510, 1511 area, which exceeds the 1.618 expansion on the long-term weekly chart, and uh, the actual silver's you know you know running away too. It's above 17 bucks, so um, those are moving up uh, you know quite a bit. How much more they've got, I really don't know. All I know is the emotionalism here is going to be quite high. The volatility is going to be um, extremely high. So. Uh, sort of uh, you know protect yourself on these things because even though they go up the flagpole they can also come down the flagpole so just remember there's a possibility of that now we do have another market that has been uh, in the news and because it runs along with the gold market and that is bitcoin it had a really nice move last night and we got up to that uh, uh, 13, almost a 12,300 level backed off a little bit. And as I just checked a little while ago, it was back to new highs again. So it's still acting pretty good. Now, the $64 question from my perspective is this a two day rally in a bear market that we had starting yesterday morning through last night and today? Uh, the answer to that, I think, can be shown by looking at the DAX, uh, not the DAX, boys and girls, the uh, 
the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, of course, uh, you know, went right up to the 61% uh, retracement and then uh, sort of rolled back over. The S&P went a little above that. It got to not quite to the 50% level. So it's important to remember. Folks, stop and think just a minute here. Um, if, in fact, negative interest rates are coming, do you realize how bad the economies in the world must look? to these federal bank and these uh, central bank people they they must literally be i mean I, you know why you know they must see something that we don't see because we looked at uh, the today on bloomberg the first thing they started off with was germany japan france and uh, one other one that uh, was there, uh, all negative interest rates and italy which has got the um, probably one of the worst credit ratings uh, that you can get it, it, their treasury notes were, were a full percentage under ours so there must be something really negative out there if that's what they're doing I don't know but uh, the negative interest rates is uh, so far beyond my pay grade that I I just don't understand it it reminds me a little bit of the 2000 market when we had the dot-com bubble when these companies had no no earnings and if uh, you know the sales increased by 10 percent the stock would double I mean we saw that you know and I mentioned when that was topping that it was a once in a generation type bubble and of course it was because the uh, the nasdaq gave back you know 80 percent uh, of its value uh but those were crazy times i can you know, there's a couple stories i could tell but hey, i should tell one story um my good friend greg asoff uh he was part of uh, emil asoff is his father and jeff is the largest broker he was the largest broker for bear Stearns. he now runs his own firm out of california his minimum account is 20 million dollars and uh, but uh, greg is a real estate guy in uh, marina not in marina del rey in um, orange county and uh very successful and a woman came to him begging for a job as a loan officer and uh, Greg was a little reluctant uh, but he did hire the lady and the lady did really good work and she worked with him for about three years and then uh, what happened was her son was working out of the garage and had one of these little dot-com uh, companies. I think it was called Sycamore Networks, as I remember. And anyway, uh, it was coming public, and uh, she, she gave his mother an X number of shares, which was worth about $5 million. And she walked into Greg's office that day, and she said, I quit, and I'm rich. And I don't have to work anymore. And he said, well, could you at least give me two weeks notice? And her answer to him was two letters that I cannot say in the uh, uh, the annals of uh, audio land. But they, one started with the F and the other started with the U. And anyway, um, she got her $5 million. But by the time everything rolled around, it ended up being worth 45000 but uh, I remember that very vividly because Greg laughed about it uh, when uh, he, he really was hoping she got the five million. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Anyway, that's how some of those things went. And there were a whole bunch of them. WorldCom, you know, there were just a, a, a lot of them that we don't hear from anymore. And, uh, of course, the, and a lot of them are still still doing pretty good. So we'll, we'll see how they end up here. Well, we've got a break coming up here pretty soon. And then we'll talk a little bit uh, about the uh, – uh, the grain markets and also the foreign currency markets because they are holding up. It's not showing that there's any panic anywhere in the foreign exchange. We're not seeing anything in the pound, the, the yen or the euro. Any of those things are showing up as anything really dramatic happening. And even with the Japanese, uh, with the Chinese renminbi, I need to discuss that because uh, what they're saying and what they're doing is two different things. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, you know, the thing about the negative interest rates, it's not so much that I don't understand it is, I, I mean, I, I can see technically what the bonds are doing, of course, but I, this doesn't make any common sense. In 7,000 years of history of this stuff, we've never had negative interest rates. So maybe this is a new phenomenon, but uh, we'll have to uh, let the markets decide what really happens uh, with that. I know we're going to see great volatility here, but we'll have to uh, wait and see. Okay, let's take a look at this euro I've posted. Uh, we were looking for that bottom to come in right around that 110.30. Uh, it certainly did. We we posted that ABCD pattern so far. That is exactly what's happened. We went up to 112, backed off to the 78% level, and now we're heading back up again, which uh, if we get above 113.40, then we'll have a pretty good chance of uh, seeing the market rally uh, a little bit more, and we'll see whether it's going to be uh, the, the case or not. Uh, someone's asking the question, question about how the Federal Reserve, you know, reacts to politics and everything. And, you know, that that's that's another, another thing beyond my pay grade, because the Federal Reserve, folks, is a private corporation, even though it's right there on Pennsylvania Avenue, right next to the White House. Uh, it is nothing to do with the government. It is it's a private bank that uh, handles our money and stuff. And uh, that was uh, from 1913 at uh, the, the uh, Jekyll Island thing. So we'll uh, if you want to read about that, that's something really good. Another good book is The Secrets of the Temple. 
uh, which is a great book uh, about the Federal Reserve also. But they, they do a move that they don't move the markets, folks. The interest rate markets is cons is is related by the market. Uh, you, there's a lot of studies that'll show that. But uh, remember that that's what uh, we're watching. I know there's a lot of jaw boning and stuff, but that's jaw boning, and that's uh, again, you know, a little beyond what I uh, usually talk about here. I try to talk about things that, you know, technically re technically related because technical stuff. I think. I think I understand it, but sometimes not as much. Let's take a look here uh, at the Japanese yen because we were watching this because it had such a downward bias, and it, it certainly continued. We got all the way down to that, um, uh, almost to the 105 level. We got to 105.40, I believe, and uh, we've had a little bit of a bounce back from that level, but we're still heading lower in that. That also sometimes reflects what's happening in the stock market because uh, the dollar yen reverse of that is the stock market. So we'll see that. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Ruby is saying Switzerland uh, in, in, had the first government to charge a negative interest rate between 1972 and 1978. This country's central bank imposed negative interest rates to help stabilize the economy and prevent its currency from rising too much from foreign investors buying its currency. A rising currency is not a good thing. What this means is the Swiss currency was losing purchasing power as compared to other countries. Well, I hope that's right. So we'll see. Well, we don't have any inflation here. Uh, well, at least that's what they're telling us. So we'll have to wait and see. All I know is we're going to see more increased volatility. That, that much I feel uh, relatively good about. Uh, in fact, we're seeing it. One of the reasons, of course, uh, for the bearishness that we looked at was uh, was this chart right here that was sent to us by John Murphy. I think we have to pay really close attention to this because this is the world stock markets. And as you can see here, uh, you know, we, we're heading down and we, we've broken down below those March lows already, folks. So that's another one that looks uh, pretty negative. And the rally that we had, this day and a half rally, you know, stopped right at the 382 in the NASDAQ and just a tiny bit above the 5%. 50% level, so we'll see. Um, uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's, okay, all right, let's see. Uh, oh, here's another quote from David David uh, White. I really, the stock market is a no called strike game. You don't have to swing at everything. You can wait for your pitch. The problem when you're a money manager is that your fans keep yelling, swing you bum. And that was a quote from War, uh, William Buffett. I thought it was Warren Buffett. Who's William? Oh, William Buffett must be his brother. I don't know. I hope you misspelled that, Bubba, because I think his name is Warren Buffett, isn't it, David? Did David make a mistake? But is there a William Wilhelm? Oh, I'm sorry. I better shut up because uh, there is a William. Because David never makes mistakes, and I've probably got that one screwed up. But let's move on here to the next one here right now. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the uh, the gold mine. I just want to show you how high this gold got. If you'll get this up here, because we uh, we exceeded the 1.618 expansion in this emotionalism that we had here. Uh, we got uh, uh, the number was at 115. Uh, I think it was 115. Excuse me, 1500. We got the 1512, I believe, and. Uh, well, and, and, and there was a beautiful head and shoulders. And, and believe me, folks, nothing bothers me more than missing part of that gold move. I mean, we bought it really good down at the bottom, and we made uh, you know really good, 70 bucks. And then I never bought it back. I mean, I waiting for a retracement that never came, and those goes back to those things. You know, fail of missing out. That was one that, you know, it's going to be etched on my. Uh, on my tombstone here is failing to miss that one out. We didn't miss the stock market one, which is actually much better than the gold one. But uh, to miss that gold one was a little bit uh, frustrating to me. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes it's chicken poop. Sometimes it's chicken salad. It depends on how you mix it. Okay, let's take a next look at another one we want to be watching, and that is this uh, Australian dollar. It just keeps getting whacked and whacked and whacked and whacked. And they, But the stock market for uh, Australia has been actually holding up pretty good. We're almost uh, at the double bottom level now here on the Australian dollar, folks. We're, we're ready to break through the 67 level, and uh, that takes us down to that 66.85, which is the same low that we had way back in December.
So uh, these are some of the things that we're watching in all of these things, but we're watching it. Uh, yes, we are watching Palladium too, uh, Ruby. It's had a uh, you know massive double top up there, and uh, one of the things that uh, and I think that's related to automobiles, as I recall. But if we take a quick look at Palladium. We'll be able to see here that uh, we've had some type of, we're down another 3%, Ruby is saying, which is not surprising, you know, given what's happening to uh, to some of these things that we're paying attention to right here. And, and well, I, I keep jumping around. Let's get to the Canadian dollar here, and then we will do the dollar index because all of these are interrelated here. But if we take a look at the uh, Canadian dollar, uh, you notice that we were looking for the price level to get up to this uh, 133 level. We hit that last night. Uh, I believe we're trading there right now. So that completes that ABCD pattern uh, pretty much what uh, – the charts were saying and you know whether that continues to go high or not you know we have to wait and see but it did complete that one now of course we talked about the dollar index and that has certainly completed that uh, three drive to a top pattern and we'll be able to see uh, what's looking up here uh, by the way folks what I'm doing here is when I'm uh, going through answering questions it's from the tiger den in there and we'll be able to see uh, some of the questions that people are asking, and I try to answer them as uh, you know best I can. Okay, let's move on. Oh, we got a break coming up, and then by the way, tomorrow, tomorrow we have a special guest, Norman, who calls it to the minute. Winsky will be our guest, and then on Friday we will have a um, Bill Meridian of Cycles Research out of Vienna, Austria. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the crude oil uh, that we were waiting to see it get down to this 5280 level. And, of course, we went through it. We got down. We're close to breaking 5200 now. And uh, that tells you that it's probably going to go lower because that was the 78% level. And it does look like it's uh, going to fail. And there we go. You know, things to the downside we'll be able to see. You know, that's uh, uh, I see a quote here from Mr. Z that PIMCO warns that negative U.S. Treasury yields switch Swiftly change from theory to reality. So, by golly, reality is with us. So, I guess you'll be able to borrow anything you want uh, at any at a really cheap price. In fact, they'll probably have negative mortgage rates pretty soon. They're going to give you the money to buy the house. That makes good sense. I think it's a pretty good idea. If this stuff keeps going on in Hong Kong, uh, the Chinese government's going to come in here and shut that down, and we're going to find out, you know, what's going. That there's a market that really looks bad, folks. And and let's take a quick look uh, because you know Hong. Kong is very uh, dear to my heart. And if we take a look here, how bad this has looked over the past weeks, you can see here just a, just a month ago, you know, we're talking about uh, June 28th, we were sitting right at the 20, the 61% retracement of that whole move down. Uh, the, the reaction back was at 29,000. That was the exact high. It stayed there for three days, right at the 61% retracement. And folks, we're trading down below. We're right at 25,000 change now and it looks like uh, you know we're going to break through the 78 percent level sometime today or tomorrow this is given only Wednesday we've only got two more days to go we could easily do that you can see the ABCD structure you know takes it down uh, quite a bit but this is a major major market of course uh, in in Asia and then the other one that we really felt why we were going to look so bad this coming week was the fact that the way this uh, emerging market charted look you can see where we closed on friday right there at around 40 uh, uh, 55 and uh, boom you know we gap down and you know that sets up a price level down around 34 20 percent lower from where we are now whether that's going to continue or not i don't know but that's what it's looking like when you watch these things this this morning so a lot of emotionalism that's uh, main thing. we haven't seen emotionalism like this in the bonds uh, since they topped in uh, 2016 so uh, this is going to be another instances of uh, whether the charts come through but we've had a a really strong instance of the uh well, this crude oil is uh, just doesn't uh, want to have any friends now. It's down to 51.78, uh, so that's certainly a, a breakout uh, to the downside. So, doesn't look like that one's going to be working very well. We got the bonds right near their new highs, and we got gold uh, making new highs. We're at 15.11 now in the Christmas gold, and so we're we're seeing some flight to quality, and the S and P keeps going lower and lower. So we'll watch uh, watch those also. Okay. Um, the currency is still holding up okay. The rest of the stuff is a little bit, little bit wild, but we'll we'll do one thing at a time and see how they end up. So, let's move on here to the next one, and that will be um, the uh, XAU. I just wanted to uh, show you where the XAU is. This is where we were as of Friday, and we have exploded. I believe we're ready to take out those highs because it's jumped so much. I'm not sure where it's trading right now. But uh, it's got to be way up there, given the fact that we've been up so much. So we'll watch that uh, very, very closely uh, also. Okay, uh, someone's asked a question about the natural. Okay, hogs and feeder cattle. I don't do feeder cattle, Ruby, because it's too small of a market. But I do watch hogs quite a bit, mainly because of the fact that it's related to uh, China and that stuff. And I'll bring up the uh, uh, – well, I think I'll, I'll just bring up August hogs because uh, that's the easiest one to take a look at. And if you'll remember, uh, this thing broke down really badly. We went down, 
and I took out those lows. The same thing in the, the Christmas hogs, and I did that one too, I believe. Give me a second. Uh, nope, I don't have the Christmas hogs in here. Son of a gun. I don't think I did. But let me do cattle because another one, that, well, this is the cattle came down quite a bit also, but they're at a higher bottom. Let me get this one up here and take a quick look at it so we can see it. And um, But here again, the, the grains have held up relatively well. The corn, you know, the 61% the, uh, retracement in the corn was at 02. We're now trading at uh, uh, 402. We're now trading at 415. The beans held up relatively well. Wheat's still under pressure, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot of stuff, you know, negative uh, about tariffs and stuff coming out of China. And I, I only think this is only part of it, folks. I think most of this is related to the uh, the negative interest rates, that people, they must really be scared. And that's why it's going to be hard for that stock market to go up with negative interest rates is because uh, – what am I talking about? I don't even know. I'm just making stuff up. That's not a good thing when you're a technician, is it? <laughs> I really don't understand negative interest rates. It just doesn't make any sense. I was at dinner last night, and I asked the owner of the restaurant if uh, I could handle his money, and I would only charge him $500 on the hundred grand, and he didn't go for it. So I don't know. We'll see what's happening here. What's it? <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next question. I hope that answers your question about the hogs, Ruby. Um, and, and a lot of that is the fact that uh, the um, China is not supposed to be buying any agricultural products. But uh, believe me, they got 1.5 billion people to feed. And so uh, it's not going to be uh, easy. And you're not seeing any of these price drops that we're seeing in cattle and hogs reflected in the supermarket at all. That's not happening. So that's another one to uh, pay, uh, you know, relatively uh, close attention to. So we'll be watching it uh, really close. Okay. The next thing I wanted to uh, talk about, uh, let, let's just let's just do the one for Christmas hogs for Ruby. This will give me something to that I do understand charts. I don't understand sometimes how they get there, but I can see what's going on, and you'll be able to see here. Uh, this is the December. We'll do December cattle first, and you'll be able to see what we're talking about here. Okay, one second. We're had we've hit some major support here in the cattle. I'll just get this up and draw it in. Give me one second here, folks, so that I can show you the uh, the pattern really easily. We had a nice move, and we're really an uh, interesting spot right now as we come in here today in the Christmas cattle. Get this up here. You see they've got to hold this level uh, right here uh, around this 109 level in the Christmas cattle. But the one I really wanted to bring up was the hogs. And if you'll give me a second here, I'll bring up the live hogs and uh, give you that one and there we go and they have just oh my goodness this is uh yeah this is uh they're having a clearance sale in hogs hold on just a second here as you can see we took out the year this is in the face of a of a giant uh, if you ever want to talk about technical stuff this is in the face of a huge uh asian flu thing uh, over in uh china didn't make any difference did it no i don't think so so uh, now we're at a big ABC down here. So you want to be looking for a buy down here in hogs and around. Well, they're trading at 61.30. The old low was 58.50. So I'd kind of keep an eye on that. That's a big completion of an ABCD. So that looks interesting. So I'd keep an eye on that one. When we get back, we want to talk about natural gas, folks, because I think this is the beginning of something pretty interesting in natural gas. I know they're beating up to crude oil, but that's not the same product. So we'll take a look at natural gas here uh, at the break when it comes up because I think that's something that we might want to uh, really look at. <sighs> If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of the long-term weekly chart in natural gas. Um, if you remember, Mr. Z was uh, really bullish this stuff until it got up to that 2.5 area where he became bearish. But what we're looking at now is a 78% retracement on the long-term charts. So far, we've had a low of 205. We're trading around 210 uh, today. So there's a possibility of a bottom forming in this area. So that's the type of thing that I try to look at when I'm looking at a longer-term chart. And the first thing I would do, of course, would be move down to a daily chart, you know, to give me a better idea of what we look at. This will cover the last five months. And as you can see, we have completed a um, butterfly pattern at the bottom down there. The low has been 203. We're now trading at 210.90. And so it's three days up now. And what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting to see the quality of the rally that we get out of here. So far, it's only been up marginally for two days, which is really nothing. So the possibility of it's going down one more time in a washout to 196 is right there. And I want to be really ready to see if it does get down there. Because if we make new lows below 203, you know, you've got a really high probability it's going to make 196. So I don't – and we've been to 196 before several years ago. And if things are really bad, and they seem to be, that's what we'll be watching here is that you're going to be seeing something that will uh, make people be surprised. Now – Natural gas is very important in China, folks, because of the, the fact that they have such bad pollution. I mean, those of you that have traveled there to Beijing or Guangzhou, some of those other large cities, you'll you'll remember how, how bad it is. And, and it's so bad in Beijing that, well, it was the last time I was there, which was 06 – that when you're in a when you're above 30 stories in one of the skyscrapers you get to see the blue sky but if you don't you know it's just all it's very yucky but uh, we'll have to uh, 
let history decide whether that's going to happen. I don't know anything about uh, smog, about as much as I do negative interest rates. Okay, uh, someone's asked a question about the uh, the rally in the NASDAQ. I'll bring it up here again just to show you, uh, you know, where we are. And it's important that this thing, uh, if the NASDAQ can get above that 70 uh, 600 level one more time, there's a chance we could get some more of a rally. But if this is all we get, if this was this day and a half rally between Tuesday and Wednesday and the market closes lower and heads down, uh, you know, we're looking at something really nasty, folks. And if uh, people are having a flight to quality and bonds, you know, maybe they're going to go to uh, zero and maybe maybe gold's going to run to 1600 or 1900 or something like that. These are interesting times, as the old Chinese curse is. So you have to be uh, a little bit flexible as you see some of these things unfold because it's getting pretty active out there. And it is related to the negative interest rates. There's something going on out there that these federal banks uh, must be scared of and I, I don't know what that is but someday they'll probably tell us but uh, maybe again not in, in our lifetime so the uh, but the markets are trading actively I mean you, you've got ups and downs you know the S&P swings 40 50 points at a time the Nasdaq swings 200 points the Dow you know Dow was down 900 it rallied uh, to be uh, to be up plus 300 yesterday so all of these are telling you got great volatility and if you're a, a short-term swing trader like I am most of the time it's some pretty good uh, you know uh, what we call uh, things to do. Let me just show you last night, uh, just since we were watching, I show you my uh, the uh, artificial intelligence program from last night. You can see we were trading around 28.54 in the S&P and the market rallied 40 handles up to 28.88. And now we're back down and we've taken out those lows by quite a bit. So we've had 40 up, 60 down. We had a 100 point move in the S&P again, 5,000 bucks. And we're just getting started here this morning. So these are some of the things you got to remember because this is uh, these are uh, these are wild markets, and uh, that's pretty much. Uh, someone asked me, "What am I watching right now?" If I told you what I was watching right now, you would probably oh look at the look at the notes just exploded to the upside another point, and we got gold just making a new high, and uh, crude oil is breaking down again, Nasdaq falling out of bed. So uh, folks, you don't want to be long stocks guess you got to buy those bonds because they're going higher okay we got the gold is at 1516 what i'm watching folks and i don't know if it means anything or not but at 10 o'clock in 13 minutes keep an eye on the gold because there's a possibility let's just bring this up here just to show you what i'm looking at to get a little bit of a fun in this thing anyway so hold on a second Wow, this is going to be an interesting one for sure, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll bring this up so you can take. Remember, hey, folks, let's a uh, little caveat empty here. Buyer beware. This only works about 60% of the time, so just be really careful and make sure, for heaven's sakes, you use a stop. And that's it. That comes in at uh, 10 15, folks. And that's where the exact time is. And uh, that is in uh, 23 minutes. Let me get make sure I got the right time. Yeah, it's 23 minutes. If it's right, it should stop at that time. I wouldn't try to uh, pick a top there. What I would do is I would go down to maybe a 15-minute chart and pick a low somewhere around uh, 15, uh, 12, something like that, and sell it on a stop and then put your stop above that high. That way you would be able to protect yourself you know, from yourself if you're going to be, uh, you know, watching that. So that's pretty much, uh, you know, what we're watching here with this. So pay, you know, sort of close attention to that. That's all I'm uh, basically trying to uh, uh, import some information, whether it's right or not. I don't know. But uh, those are just some of the things that I'm looking at. Uh, so boy, just, hey, folks, I, I really, please don't ask me about negative interest rates. I, I know you keep asking me, but honest to God, I really don't know, and I don't, uh, I just doesn't make any sense to me. But, hey, you know, the dot-com bubble didn't make any sense to me either, but uh, that came and went, so we'll have to wait and see. We've never had negative interest rates in 7,000 years. Maybe this is the time to have it, so we'll have to uh, have to wait and see uh, what that means, but.
we'll go on to the next one. Okay, someone's asking a question about something that I do know a tiny bit about, and I do uh, recommend a tiny bit, and that is this banking index. And I wanted to uh, show you the fact that we had this big move in the banking index. It would break out to the upside. Everybody was talking about it. All it did was make a double top at the 61% retracement from May, and then it just you know totally reversed with the rest of the market and started to go down. This is one of the reasons why we were so bearish coming into the market this week was the fact that we were watching these things, you know, just get uh, a little bit crazy. And that's exactly, you know, what we're seeing here. So we'll watch that very, very closely. So we'll do one thing at a time as we walk through here. Oh, my goodness, we're almost to the break already. Remember, tomorrow, folks, we do have Norm Winsky as our guest. Friday will be Bill Meridian, and Bill has been very bullish on gold. Those of you who remember, he was on two weeks ago talking about the fact that gold looked very bullish for the month of August, and that's certainly been the case. And we know we owe a big debt of gratitude for Mr. Z here in the room because he's kept these folks uh, long, and also Steve, uh, Steve Rhodes, too, uh, have you know they've been uh, long the goal for uh, quite some time, and uh, but that's uh, we'll see what happens. And anyway, I, it looks like stocks are uh, you know getting ready to move a little older. Uh, someone uh, asked about the post of a bed. Is that B Y N D? Is that Beyond uh, Meat? Is that what that is? Uh, S and P. I don't know if that's uh, I'm, that must be it. Okay, I'll do this. I'll do the bed bath and <laughs> bed bath. I'll do it beyond meat when we get back from the break. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I just thought I'd mention that the S&P just made a 61% retracement of the low from August 5th. Uh, that came in at uh, 2823. We're now trading at 2831. So sort of uh, keep an eye on it. By the way, the gold has just jumped another $3 here, which it should be doing. It should not be making a high until around 1015. So it could be a great deal higher than the night or the 1520 that we've shown already so and remember this is experimental so uh sometimes they work sometimes they don't and for heaven's sakes you know you have to use a stop there's no question uh, uh it, well <laughs> who knows anyway let's keep an eye on it we'll do it for experimental purposes if nothing else but the it's very important that that s p holds that level now the bed uh, beyond meat i posted you can see the 61 percent retracement there's a big gap right there uh, right now, it's uh, you know down like with the rest of the market, but there should be some support at that 61% retracement there in Beyond Meat. I I don't know anything about the product other than the fact that it is a, a vegetable substitute with a whole lot of chemicals in it. But we'll we'll need to uh, pay uh, close attention to it. Uh, regarding the euro, folks, we're now getting ready to uh, attack that 112.50 level that we talked about earlier in the show, uh, completing that big larger ABCD pattern up there so that'll be another one that will be uh, quite interesting but the key today from what we're looking at this morning is that 2820 in the S&P as long as we can hold above that uh, we've got a chance here to you know maybe bounce back a little bit today and make some type of a bottom but we're going to see some incre incredible volatility in all of these things including gold and uh, we'll see swings of 50 60 dollars without any trouble at all as we go through uh, some of the things that we're paying close attention to here here today so that's basically it so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless and we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow with norm winsky